driving leave, you can please silence your cell phones. Coach will begin with a short opening statement, and then we'll go to questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Coach, whenever you're ready. First of all, uh, this weekend, Military Appreciation Day, you know, all the things that's gone on and things that are going on right now in the news and 9-11 just recently. We always appreciate what the servicemen have done for us and we're looking forward to having a fantastic crowd to represent them in that honor. Uh, the game last week was obviously a difficult game. I thought that there were some parts of it that were exciting and they gave us an opportunity to win. There was other parts that obviously we didn't do so well in. Our opponent this week, Western Michigan, Last year gave us a, a really, really close game at their place. Uh, it was a game of two different halves, obviously one half our way, one half their way. And we're looking forward to playing them once again, knowing that uh, Coach Lester knows a lot about this place. And the, I believe there's four or five guys left on the team that were here when he was here. So I'm ready for you guys' questions. Josh? Uh, you know, statistically speaking, I think that was Sterling Hoffaker's best game. He had a couple of nice punts. Obviously, he's been good here for a while. I was curious, just like if you've seen him grow over the last couple of years, and how you kind of see growth at a position like punter. I don't know how you guys kind of evaluate that. Well, we do evaluate that. I mean, like I said, I've got a special teams coordinator's background. When I saw Sterling when I first came in here, I had you always have previous. You you, you rate guys off of previous experiences. And my first thing I said to him, I said, he's not very tall. And uh, I remember uh, Coach Coffin, who was the special teams coordinator, said at the time, he said, Coach, this guy is good. And I said, he's not good until I say he's good. And he kicked three balls, and I said, Coach, this guy is good. <laughs> and he's been that way ever since. Me and Coach uh, Lustick had a conversation last year about him when the season ended, and we do a lot with our punters, and, and Sterling's extremely, I'm glad you brought this up, he's a great guy to talk about. I don't, I don't you know, he's a kicker, but he's a great guy to talk about. He, uh, he can do a lot of things well. He can rugby, he can move, he's, he's more athletic than what he looks like. But uh, he is so talented that we, I told him, I said, we need, he's one of those guys that you wanna do everything with him because he can, and we need to do less with him because he's so good. And this, this year we're trying to do less. That doesn't mean we won't rugby. That doesn't mean we won't do some of those things. But when we just sit him back, we, when we just let him sit back there and be an NFL kicker and punt the football, that's exactly what he is. He's an NFL kicker. If you saw you know, some of the hang time that he got on some of those kicks, you know, like OMG, you know, Google that if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, he's... <laughs> He, he is a weapon in the game, and he really helps to give us an opportunity to win. So uh, he's an easy guy to talk about. Bart, in the middle. Uh, Coach, what, uh, after three games, what is the biggest issue of the offense? Inconsistency, breakdowns at different spots at different times. And it, again, it goes all the way back. <laughs> it goes all the way back to when I talked to you guys the very first time and I didn't have my voice. And I'm like, There's, there were just some things that we needed to take care of. And we're going to go back and we're, I'm going to do a review on, um, I'm not throwing anybody at the bus. This is how I operate. If something happens once, it's called, to me it's a happening. Sometimes stuff just happens. Don't freak out. If you've been around a long time, you're a little bit older, you're a little bit longer in the tooth, don't freak out. It's just a happening. When something happens twice, you know, whoa, wait a minute now. Because if you're really thorough, you've got to check into why is, why is this consistently happening? And it's the second time in a row that we've lost a lot of guys with soft uh, muscle tissue injuries in camp, and, and, and especially a certain group of people. Uh, and we can't have that, whether that's uh, the way we train, whether that's the way uh, the medical people handle it, may, whether that's the individuals themselves uh, taking a day off from a mental aspect because there's certain injuries that you can push through and then there's certain injuries that medical people will not question and the coaches will not question. And the longer you're in the game, uh, you kind of get what those are. And I'm not throwing any of those groups underneath the bus. All I'm saying is that we're going to go back when this is all said and done and make sure that we, I don't have to sit up here and talk about this again in year five, six, seven, or eight. I'm just not going to do it. So we need to evaluate what we're doing and uh, see if we can solve the issue. I know you don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Um, it always does come back to the quarterback. Uh, you see Tommy, three straight games, I think he's ruled out. 
and throw late, throw a pit. How concerned are you about that trip? I'm not throwing Tommy at the bus at all. I think I'm going to I'm going to describe all three of those interceptions, and you guys you guys go back and check the tape. The first one at Liberty, the ball was tipped. Whether it should have been thrown or not, the ball was tipped, which means you ch it changed the trajectory of the flight. Okay. The second one against uh, Maryland, you guys saw what happened. You guys seen the tape. Okay, interception. This one, you know, I was. Again, something happens once, it's a happening. It happens twice, there's an issue. When this one happened, I was not happy. I went back and watched the tape, and I'm completely satisfied that it won't happen again, that it was a happening. You guys didn't see it, did you? You want me to explain to you what happened? Yes. There was a guy covering the running back. I believe the running back was Abdul Adams. The guy fell down about the five or six yard line. Abdul Adams goes into the end zone, and he's absolutely open for a touchdown. By the time Tommy breaks out of the pocket and sees Abdul, it looks like a touchdown. There's a guy close to him, but you've got to make a throw to get it there in time. There's no doubt in my mind that he's capable of making that throw, and I would want him to make that throw. And the minute he pulled trigger on it, the guy that was laying down stood up. And you're going to say, well, maybe he should have saw that guy laying down. I can't tell you how many trick plays that we have in our offense where we tell a guy to go all the way down to the ground and get back up. When you're on a football field with guys and everybody is hunting, it's like being in a den with a whole bunch of tigers and lions. They're all hunters and they're all hunting. The last thing you want to do on a football field is drop your eyes and look at the ground because you may be waking up in the hospital. Okay, You're always looking on the horizon. Uh, I've ran plays and special teams on kickoffs where we've had guys go down on kickoff return, a guy run and throw the ball all the way across the field. We did it at UCLA to Matthew Slater that plays for the Patriots. Now he got called back because it was a forward pass, but Matthew Slater ran it in for a touchdown in the doggone Rose Bowl. Those plays are plays that are with, that have been in football for a long period of time. And it has to do with guys don't look on the ground on the football field because you better keep your head up to what's going on. That is a happening play for Tommy. And when I saw it, I was like, I see it. And all, I actually got, and watch this, I actually got excited. Because I said, okay, he has handled it, he has grown, it's not going to happen. And it was a happening. That's not the way I felt at the game. Okay, but it's definitely the way I feel right now about it. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I really believe we are. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Coach, it seems like Ippy played another strong game on Saturday. What did you see? I didn't hear the first thing that you said. I'm sorry. It seemed like Ippy fell off okay, okay, a strong game on Saturday once again. What did you see from his development from year one last year going to this year? You know, he, uh, I thought he had a PI call on him that uh, was very interesting. But uh, he's, he's battling. He's doing a lot better. We still need him to be a little bit more physical. But as far as his coverage skills and things that he's doing in the coverage game, He's doing some really exciting things. Now, he left the game with an owie, and uh, I haven't had an opportunity to find out where he's at with it right now, but hopefully he'll be ready to go for the game. Andrew, um, on a similar note to the owies, any update on Sam Heckle for this week, and then McKinley Williams, I know he was just still captain. I, I, would, I would imagine that Sammy would probably be in the same situation. I don't know about, uh, about McKinley. It's, it, uh, it's so funny because we all call him bears. So I, I'm not I'm not sure on him yet. I got to wait and see about McKinley and then uh, the rest of the guys. I haven't had a chance to talk to them. Yet. They have to see the doctors and the trainers, and we normally get all that information later on in the day on Monday. Unfortunately. And kind of curious what it's been like for you and Mike Lynch to try and work with the Tommy as a pocket guy and then the offensive line and their issues. How creative. Have you had to be, and are there past experiences you can kind of draw from where maybe you had similar groups to work around early? You know, we always pride ourselves in trying to figure out a way to get it done. There's always, our philosophy is there's always enough players to win. And that's what coaching is for, is to find a way to put them in the right spots. And uh, we take a lot of pride in it. Coach Lynch takes a lot of pride in it as long with, as, long as with me and uh, myself. And uh, we'll keep working. I, I don't think we're that far off once again. The guys that we were playing were really good, okay? And you're like, well, you guys have played them, played them well before. Yeah, we have. 
And I thought for three quarters we played them well Saturday. We just, uh, our defense I thought did a nice job. Our special teams I thought did a nice job. We didn't score enough points. We tried to find ways to create points. We tried to take chances to score points. We knew what, we had to score some points to let them feel the pressure to have a chance. And, uh, you know, it just didn't work out that way. Uh, we've been 23.5 dogs before and won at Syracuse University. You know, we've, I've been 21 point dogs before and won at other universities. 27.5 was just a little bit too much this year. Okay, just a little bit too much this year. We'll just see how it goes from here on out. Yeah. Uh, the running game scored three touchdowns versus Liberty and kind of struggled the past two weeks. Aside from playing two good football teams, what do you attribute those uh, rushing issues to? Playing uh, three good football teams and uh, stopping the run and making us force the pass. I mean, if you were going to play us right now, there's no reason for you to let, uh, let the passing game get going. You know, you want to take away the run and see if we can beat them with the pass. And I think the smart coaches out there, that's how they're playing us. Matt? You know, um, here, uh, I was going to ask you about the defense and just the, the step they made from, you know, how disappointed you were in the Maryland game to, you know, Saturday night, I mean, they, they kept you guys in it for two and a half quarters. You know, not only that, but I want to say, I'll say three of the touchdowns, but there's two touchdowns that didn't even have to go on the board. They, they played at an extremely high level and uh, very proud of them and the defense coaches, Coach Ward, on how they bounced back. I know you look at the score and you go, how can you say that? But uh, that wasn't, that wasn't, that's not how we felt in the game. And I don't think that's how the way the 50,000 people that were in the dome felt. And I think we, he, they played well, played good enough for us to win uh, based after three quarters and uh, just really disappointed that uh, we couldn't find a way to score more points on their defense. Mark? Well, Coach, I asked you last week about the team's confidence and now back-to-back -back games where the score's been lopsided in favor of the opposition. That it, uh, how do you assess mentally where this team is? I think we're fine. I think that uh, we have an opportunity to win every game that we have from here on out. I think the big thing that we need to make sure of, and it happened last year, is that Clemson can beat you once, but you don't let Clemson beat you twice. And the opponent that we're playing is opponent that is capable. They proved last year that they're capable of scoring points and they can get us into a shootout. And they're not afraid of us. And they're going to be coming in here and their head coach has a lot of experience playing in this place. So he knows the positives and the negatives that he needs to get his team ready. And we expect a very hungry and, um, and an opponent that's, that's, that can beat us and we better come ready to go, and we better be ready to play a very, very good football game. I mean, you got a lot of young guys on this team. You don't see any sense that they're shaking. Young guys in the family, young sons, young daughters in the family, they don't get a vote. You know, they just get in the back seat, and we load up the car, and they go. So uh, they're part of the family. They'll be in the car. They'll be ready to go. Two more questions, Josh and Steven. You know, I was curious what you saw when you went back on the film out of an empty set. It seemed like you guys had stuff open. They were just bringing more than you could block to some extent. Was that part of what was happening there, where you only have five guys and they sent six or something? Yeah, any, anytime you go into a, an empty set situation, there's, there's two things that are going to happen. This is football 101. You know how uh, Coach Leach coaches that class over there in Washington State? This is football 101. Either they're going to rush four or less okay, and play uh, drop eight, drop nine, drop into coverage, or they're going to bring one more than you can handle and make you get rid of the ball right away. And in doing that, that means the rest of their defense is spread out and everybody's on a guy. They call it cat coverage. I got that cat, you got that cat, you got that cat. Everybody's in cat coverage. And all you need is one throw, one catch, and one missed tackle and you have a big play or you have points. So you're definitely putting something at risk because they're gonna bring one more guy and try to hit your quarterback. You have gotta sort it out and you gotta to try to find a way to make a couple of throws into that. And it's a, it's a way to, to get some easy touchdowns if you can handle the pressure, if you can handle the stuff. So it's the receiver has to run the right route, the offensive lineman has to turn, around, turn loose the right guy you know they bring five and you're like oh that guy no we can do things where it's not that guy it's that guy we can move it around but uh 
we need those guys to separate. We need to make a play. We need to make a throw. And it's going to be some heat on you. So uh, we'll get there. You know, we understand what, what was going to happen. The quarterback understood what was going to happen. The receivers understood what was going to happen. The line understood what was going to happen. We just did not, we did not make the play. Okay. Last question, Steve. Uh, curious what your relationship was like with Tim Lester. Any conversations when you came into the program? The obviously recruited Eric Dungy or after the game last year where Eric uh, did Eric things, basically. Yeah, the uh, really didn't know him. Got an opportunity uh, this year. Went out to a function on the West Coast. It was really a Coach Tomey function. And he had passed away before the function. And I had already committed to go. So after going to the funeral, I still went to the function, and uh, Tim was there. So I got a chance to meet him and his wife. I also got an opportunity to meet uh, Coach Hughes Freeze and his wife there. And at a function before that was um, uh, Coach Loxley and his wife. I got an opportunity. So I was three for three on, on the beginning of this season. So um, nice people seemed very nice. They were very complimentary. And you know, obviously, I told, he was really excited about how Eric had finished. And, uh, you know, I thanked him for recruiting him. I said we were glad that he was here. And it uh, seems like a nice guy, and it seems like he's doing a nice job at Western Michigan getting that program started. Thanks, Thanks very much, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, later,